make these calls and when to make these pit stops, it has got to be just stressful. Oh, it's the hardest. You see your car out there, you know all you got to do is stop to put tires on it. He's going to be much faster. We'll go back and follow up on a story from the last round of pit stops. We saw Ricky Craven dragging an air hose out of his pits. He came down, then the caution came out. He gets the word, caution's out. Which would have been fine, but you cannot run over your air hose. That is a penalty. And it's dangerous. The reason that it's a penalty is because it's dangerous. When he ran over that hose where the fittings came apart, that hose started whipping around in the pit box, and Dave Burns, that was a, a wild situation. And the guy who got hit was on the infield side of the wall. He should have been safe. That was Wayne Deloria, the trainer on the 32 team. He catches the right front tire, the old one when it comes around, and he also gives them the left front tire. Now, the only positive in this, this is his tackle box. He's the trainer on the team, so he knows where all the pain pills are. He's okay. He's staying in the game. Fortunate there. And Craven was brought back down pit road for a penalty. Ricky, one of those on the tail end of the lead lap right now. He's in 11th spot. He's just in front of Kenny Wallace and hoping for a caution sometime soon. But fortunate for him, he got to take that black flag penalty under the yellow. Yeah. And still, Joe Nemechek working Kenny Wallace for the lead. Nemechek just can't make his car work well enough down low to complete the pass. And these two cars have, job, Keep on your right. have pulled away from the 97 car of Kurt Busch. That's Kenny Wallace's spotter, Stevie Reeves, talking to him that we heard a minute ago. All right, Joe, try it again. Uh, same result. Let's try oh. it down to turn one and two. He, what he's hoping to do is try to get up far enough right there to when they get out the corner they're even so maybe he'll have a shot in three and four but like you said earlier Alan he needs that racetrack that one car is using to come off a two he just can't get that forward bite Matt Yoakum well Alan you talked about Stevie Reeves the spotter on this one team and that's one of the advantages that you have when you're your former I mean, you have a spotter who's a former driver because he knows what the driver's looking for, and he told Kenny that you look very good off of two. He changed his line going from the bottom to the high side because he is on the tight side. They made a track bar adjustment and overcompensated for a good car. Now it's on the tight side. They're talking about going back up on the track bar on their next stop to Bill Weber. Well, Matt Allen was talking about the decisions that the crew chiefs and the car chiefs have to make down here on pit road and the drivers making decisions on the track. Well, the spotters are doing an outstanding job. For instance, Joe Nemechek's spotter is Shannon McGlamory. He's not only helped him work his way through traffic, but he's told him throughout the day which parts of the track are working better, whether it's high, whether it's low, where the one car is running, what might be the best way to get around him. So while Andy Petrie has encouraged him from the pit box to be patient, Shannon upstairs is telling him the best way to weave his way around the track. There are three guys driving that car, not one. He's got to run this time off turn two. Let's see if he can make it stick off four. I think he's going to slide up right in front of Kenny Walsh and take the lead away. Third time today, Joni Machek has led. And here's Ricky Rudd trying to get his lap back. Rudd, first car lap down in 14th place. Whoa. And looks like the Rudd and those guys that worked on that car, and they have that car handling much better than the beginning. Remember, Ricky, one of the guys that started way in the back, 37th place is where Ricky took the green flag. He's running 14th now, trying to catch leader Joe Nemechek. 168 laps to go here in Rockingham. Mountain biking, kayaking, whatever you're doing, the Subaru All-Star Sale has a lineup to get you on your way. The stylish legacy. The rugged outback. The versatile Forester. Each has full-time all-wheel drive. So getting there isn't the problem. Deciding what to do first is. See these stars today at the Subaru All-Star Sale. Hey, Ed's gel is going to clean up your act with Edge Clean Shave Gel. Edge Clean. Edge Clean's got a built-in facial cleanser that helps lift dirt and oil every time you lather. 
to help lift dirt and oil every time you shave. Edge clean complete. So clean up your act with Edge Clean Shave Gel. Chili cheese chips, chili dogs, chili chowder, veggie chili, chili chimichangas. Chili on a stick? No, thanks. Tofu chili, dirty chili. Here's the real way to eat chili. Tim Horton's Hearty Chili in an oven-baked bread bowl with a medium coffee and donut, just $5.59. Also available in chicken stew. <laughs> Montreal, you used to be winners. Now you're just whiners. Boo! We are different. We are French. <laughs> Shut up. You're not even real French anyway. Like like those guys from Denmark, man. In Vancouver, we're real. <laughs> yeah, the championship BC Lions. They're really gonna kick some alouette butt. <laughs> Boutique sucks. BC rules. <laughs> CFL. The rivalry lives on. What's up, dudes? At Sportsnet.ca, there's no off-season for shopping. Just log on to the Sportsnet store in association with River City Sports and grab your favorite team's hat or jersey. Get your gear online at the Sportsnet store. Sportsnet.ca. Be there. Joe Nemechek is your leader. And second place changes hands. Kenny Walsh just, I hit about all he could stand to Kurt Busch, hound him around his back bumper. Is something wrong with Kenny Walsh's car? No. I, you know, I think he just got tired of, of having these guys hounding him, and at this point figured there's a long way to go. Let's just get me by myself. That's exactly what happened. We're, all, we're not quite at 250 miles of this one. And you see Kenny in. Kenny in backing up. Him. Maybe this, uh, maybe at the end of this run, we'll get a little bit better. We'll make up some time. We're doing good, though. Don't worry about it. That's crew chief Paul Andrews talking to Kenny. Hey, let's take a look at Rush Hour. Drama is teaming up China's best detective with L.A.'s worst. Which one of y'all keeping? Jackie Chan, Chris Tucker, <laughs> Rush Hour. Rush Hour, coming up next after NASCAR. It's debut on TNT. Joe Nemechek having a great drive. And, and we talked about this earlier, but it really does apply. You talk about lame duck status. Here's a lame duck driver with a team. He's going someplace else for next year. Team's desperately seeking a sponsor for next year to try and just stay in business. And it's a good race team. I got to work with these guys at Pocono earlier in the year, and they really have a good race team. And it would be a real shame to see them not get a sponsor and continue with this team because obviously they've been pretty dominant today and when they get their act together tough to beat and we've seen just how well that bobby labon is running in the 18 car well nemechek has has come up past bobby labon and put him a lap down not good for bobby ricky rudd couldn't get his lap back check this out here are the top five in today's race exactly two career winston cup wins between the five of them Wow, that's pretty strong. And we showed you earlier, three drivers have gotten their first ever Winston Cup win here at Rockingham. Donnie Allison, Mark Martin, and Ward Burton. Robbie Gordon, 31 cars, two laps down, about to go three as leader Joni Machek comes to his inside. <laughs> Hello. We're on board with Ron Hornaday in the Conseco Pontiac. Well, he passed Nemechek and Kenny Wallace back about 10 or 15 laps ago, and we see that he's used up most of the good in those tires, and here comes Nemechek about to put him a lap down again. 
He's won almost two laps down. He is Hornaday back in 29th spot. And make it two laps down. Our storylines coming into today's race, Jeff Gordon, would he race hard or would he coast? Well, I think he'd like to have raced hard, but the car wasn't under him. Oh, he's, you know, Jeff Gordon is doing as well as he can right now. He just doesn't have much to go with today. Gordon back in 24th place, a lap down to the leader. Look at this, loss of up to 14 miles an hour over a 50 lap run. And it's the, it's the surface that causes the tires to lose all that speed. Benson, Jarrett, and Kenseth have come from the back up into the top ten. Jeff Burton looked like he was going to join him for a while, then his car sort of quit on him. And he's back in 22nd now, Jeff Burton. There we see Dale Jarrett. He's currently in seventh position. But again, Jarrett is one of the eight drivers on the tail end of the lead lap. They were caught having just pitted under the green flag when that last caution came out, Bill, and now he'd sure like to see another yellow flag soon. He sure would because that car is running extremely well, Alan. The first run today here at Rockingham, the car was loose, so they made an air pressure adjustment and set the track bar down. So that really made the car come to DJ, and ever since then, the car seems to get better and better lap after lap. And Jared is a guy who knows this track very well, and 12 of the last 13 races here, a top 10 finish and he's a previous winner at the North Carolina Speedway. Matt Dave and Bill a phrase that Ward Burton has used throughout the season is when he's not running well is I can't feel the car in the track. Well he was very quiet for a long time on the radio. He just radioed in a few laps ago. I am in the track. Ward's car is running well and he's running up in the high line which is the line that he preferred to run earlier in the race. And that when you're talking about what you what you can't feel is he's feeling it through the steering wheel. He wants to be able to feel that car grip. Hey, Marty. Well, these guys have struggled all day big time. The car is tight. I just asked Kevin Hamlin, uh, how is it? Is it tight? And plus, we're really slow. So that really helps things out a lot when you're at a racetrack. But uh, down on the track bar for Kevin Harvick this time, it will be four tires and a very long stop as Ron Otto has some trouble with the left rear. Going to be about lap 260 when we see all of the leaders come onto pit road. They last stopped at 179, so an 80 lap window from there. And we're at 246 now. So let's take a break and we'll be back for the green flag pit stops. Joan Imachek is your leader. You're watching NASCAR on TNT. I don't like you. Oh, I love you. Seems that I'm always. With its smooth car-like ride and rugged good looks, the 2002 Hyundai Santa Fe really takes hold. On road or off. Adam, I'm Erica. Hi, Erica. These are for you. Thanks. Sweet. 